today uh, was the media day, in fact, for the WNBA, excuse me, the Olympic team represented by 12 WNBA athletes who are going to be representing their country in Tokyo. I just want to I want to share with the world, if I may, Megan, something that you are extremely proud of. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our girl, Miss Megan Price, getting the opportunity to speak to one Miss Diana Taurasi, the GOAT. So uh, here is that little clip for y'all. Megan Price with Sideline Sports and Sports Arena. Can you talk about, is there anyone new to the team that you're looking forward to playing with in particular? Well, I mean, I've actually, you know, been in training camp with a lot of these girls and, uh, you know, played against and with them. Um, you know, it's just always exciting to see how this team comes, comes together. Uh, you know, every single one has its own identity. Uh, no two teams are ever the same. Um, and obviously with Don and, and the coaching staff seeing, uh, you know, what style of play we're going to try to execute. Um, you know, we have a lot of newcomers, which will be great to integrate them into what we want to do. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of players that, you know, I'm excited to see how they do and, and how they integrate. So um, I, I think each, each person brings uh, a different flavor to the, to the team and uh, uh, we'll see how it ends up. Awesome. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. So, like we said, to watch what these 12 women are going to do, they're representing our country. Right. And, you know, John and I, basically, when we talked to Sylvia Fowles, we kind of wanted to get her sense of what this moment meant to her. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to play next here is John, Sheer, Silent, and, and myself just talking to one Miss Sylvia Fowles about what it means for her in this moment. Hello, Sylvia. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, so my question is, how will you go about using this platform uh, to promote women's equality, not only for athletes, but media members and, and women in the sports world. Thank you. Um, just making sure we, we don't get sidetracked of what we're here for, but when we have the opportunity, making sure we're talking about those things that are important to us is a way I think we can utilize on this platform. Sylvia, as always, I appreciate your time and, and congrats. Um, kind of piggybacking off the last question, talk to me just about this moment as you have a black head coach, you yourself are a black woman in the WNBA, you are an all-star, a force to be reckoned with, and now you ladies are all going over to represent our country. Can you just talk to me about the gravity of the moment that you ladies are about to experience? Um, uh, it's it's kind of hard to grasp um, in a way. Uh, because we've been put on the back burner for so long. And so when we talk about it, uh, you have a group who's willing to listen, but you also have a group who's tired of us talking. Uh, but one thing's for sure is we have a lot to say and to be on in the spotlight at this moment, at this point in time, to be able to go out there and compete with some of the best in the world. Um, I think we have a lot to say and we have a lot of eyes on us. So it's only right that we talk about the things that are meaningful to us and making sure we lead by example. Mike and Alice, I just want to get your guys' thoughts on um, just what you've seen so far. Mike, I'm so just happy give me for your Skyler. so yeah. happy for Skylar. I mean, look, Diana Taurasi. I mean, I mean, obviously, we know what she's meant to the game. I mean, especially here in the Valley, because I know I mentioned it the other day to you guys. I mean, when she went, when she decided to go make a few million and play overseas and not play, a lot of people, a lot of WNBA fans here weren't really, you know, too thrilled. But they had to bite their tongues because going to make six times as much money to go play in Russia for a year or whatever. So you got to go do it. But what it means to the Olympic team, I mean, to be, like she said, to be in her fifth games, I mean, both her, her and Sue Bird to go out, you know, and it's just to me with basketball, I mean, I always think women's basketball has been at like, not that it's been at the forefront because it was a great question, but I mean, it's, it's been ahead of a lot of other women's sports because every four years people in the U S only talk about, you know, whether it's, whether it's, uh, you know, obviously basketball is one of them, but gymnastics, swimming, stuff like that. But I think the, the, w this USA basketball team, the, the way they form, I mean, you always talk about the names that get left off the list, right? I mean, this is a phenomenal lineup, but you could go, mm -hmm. you could go 12 more names. It started shotting down like six or seven names. And, I, but, and I said this, I'm not going to do like when they do snub shows and stuff, I'm not saying their names because I don't think they got snubbed. 
but you could go like seven, eight, nine more names and still form a probably a gold medal team. But um, I do like the fact that Mike brought up a significant point. Um, the only thing more degraded in American society than the black male is the black female, especially the black female athlete. I believe someone wrote a nice, ugly disposition on Miss Richardson, who qualified for the Olympics, by the way, saying that she looks like a dude. Why? Because she has less than 10% body fat and she qualified for the Olympics and she likes the competition, comparing her to a horse. Uh, the U.S. women's soccer team, always kicking ass and taking names, yet we don't take them seriously because they're underpaid, unlike the male athletes on their soccer disposition, who royally suck and constantly get their butt kicked in international competition. Oh, and then we have the WNBA and the NBA. Now, I'm not going to say the ladies in the WNBA can hang with the NBA players. What I will say is that you don't have athletes bashing other athletes. It's usually fat boys and couch potatoes who are bashing these WNBA players because they lack their skill, their commitment, and their attitude towards success. If you don't like what you watch and change the channel, but to belittle these women who bust their souls and give their hearts for what they love is just demeaning and asinine. Quit hiding behind the video boards and your keyboards and actually do something for a change. You want to make a change in your community? Uh, like the WNBA player who got a man released from prison for a crime he didn't commit? Or you want to stand for justice like this last May after the George Floyd killing? Do something. Quit talking. Actions speak louder than words. Amen to that. John Shear got to talk to Nafisa Collier, and he got to ask her a very interesting question, and I want you guys to hear her answer. So what would mean more to you, winning a WNBA title or winning gold at the Olympics? Thank you. Uh, that's a hard question. I mean, they are both so, so important. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the Olympics comes every four years. So that's obviously really important doing something for your country. It's hard to do. I mean, it's hard to choose because, you know, obviously, I don't know. I can't choose. It's too hard. I want them both. 